Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101, and today we're going to talk about what kind of a pimp Ken Onion is. But before we do that, notice anything different? Do I look a little extra sparkly? Well, that's because I went and joined a secret society over the weekend. You know, I did the whole blood oath thing and all that stuff, so I wanted to learn some secrets of the universe. And the first secret that I learned was how to get my frickin' camcorder off a of 720p and onto 1080. It's really like that hard. You think it would be simple, like, you know, home, oh, hit the 1080p button. No, I haven't been able to frickin' find it. It was buried in a setting. So finally, with the help of Ben from Living Survival, he was like the leading the, the whole secret society thing. Uh, I was able to figure it out. So, you don't know how long I've been struggling with this and looking at everyone else's freaking videos and be like, why can't I figure out this freaking camera? So, now we're, now we're better. Now hopefully we look better. And you can see the peeling paint on the shed even more clear than you could before. Okay, enough about that. So talking about Ken Onion. I don't normally review folders because I don't normally use folders. I'm more of a fixed blade type guy. And you get a lot more of the back and forth, you know, people fighting in the comments section when you review folders because you know, some people are good with budget folders and other people are like knife snobs. You know, like, well, if it's not a $400 folder, it's a piece of crap. But yet you, got, you balk at a $250 chest mix. <laughs> it's like, ugh. So this knife had been calling to me ever since I saw it at Blade. I don't normally, this is the, this is the one I showed the other day. This is the CRKT Homefront. And it's got their new technology, which allows you to quickly field strip this knife and break it down into three pieces. Now, let me be perfectly clear and honest. I've never liked CRKT's folders. Didn't like them. I've messed with them. I've had a couple of them. They didn't do anything for me. I like some of their products. Uh, the, the, the Ken Onion machete, oh, Ken Onion again, jeez, see what I'm talking about? Uh, like the Half a Chance, the Chance in Hell, you know, the, the Chogan Tomahawks and things like that. Yeah, I like those. I didn't get like the folders. This folder, to me, is like some other company made it. Uh, it. It just doesn't look or feel like a typical CRKT folder. The action on it is perfectly smooth. It looks good. Okay, it's Aus 8 steel, which this is where the knife snobs jump in. Well, also it's crap. Why is it crap? Okay, in the comments section, please explain to me and everybody else why Aus 8 is crap. It's because edge retention, that sort of thing. Yeah, you have to sharpen it more often. Flip side of that, as I said in the other video, is it's easier to sharpen. Not everybody is an elite level knife user with high end uh, sharpening techniques or sharpening equipment. So the S30 V's and the freaking CPM3 V's and all the super steels, they're a pain in the butt to sharpen. They're even more pain in the butt to field sharpen. For everyday use, budget friendly, Aus 8 works fine. You're not using these to pry things. You're not batoning with it. Now, I never really liked the wire. Never liked Aus 8 before was purely cosmetic because mainly the the company that used it a lot was Cold Steel, and on their Aus 8 blades, uh, they had like this ugly gray powder coat, which I absolutely hated. This is more of a brushed steel finish. You know, the Fuller just make, I love Fullers. There's a, there's a Bark River coming out here real soon with a Fuller that I'm just dying to get my hands on. It just makes it look that much better. The pocket clip is very subtle in that, I mean, look at how it lines up there and it's black. It, it pretty much disappears when it's in your pocket. 
So we're gonna move this camera around here in a sec. We're going to uh, show you how this field strip technology works, but I mean, Ken Onion, how he keeps coming up with these new ideas is beyond me. As a new knife designer myself, I've got four in production, all successful. I've got three coming out in the near future. I look up to people like Ken Onion because he thinks outside the box. I mean, he come, he and he sees things. You know, he comes he comes up with you know the speed save, and he comes up with this, and then he made the world's greatest knife sharpener, in my opinion, the uh, the the Ken Onion Edition Work Sharp with the blade grinder attachment. I can't imagine life without that thing, seriously. But this, okay, let's talk about one other thing before we open it up because we got to look at the pros and the cons as to what most people are going to say average street price for this average is about a hundred bucks now I got it on Amazon for 89 bucks which ain't bad but for the budget people it's like it's a little bit much for the budget people and for the you know the knife snobs I'm sorry if you don't like that term, but mm, I could never pay $400 for a folder. They, they just think that this is not, it's not special enough for them. So I don't know exactly. What, it, it's just kind of in that uh, no man's land. But I had the extra money. I got it. And I'm very happy with it. So let's move the camera around here. I'll show you how this thing works. I'll do my best to keep it in frame here. When I'm at an angle like this, it's always a little bit tricky. You want to break this down. What you do is you're going to move this over. That is going to disengage this side. And you've got a wheel kind of hidden in this reverse jimping here. And you're going to spin the wheel. And that's going to unscrew that screw right there. And that's all there is to it. Simple. So there you got. I mean, if you really want, if you needed to take down a couple more parts, which you don't need to, I'm just saying there's there's the two uh, screws right there for the liner lock. But that's all there is to it to break it down. So there's no. There's no bearings or any kind of things that's gonna come apart on this thing it's nice and simple and even without all that extra kind of stuff the action on it is just incredible so we're gonna put this back together put that there we're going to get line that up I always forget which way am I turning it here. Okay, so we're spinning it back toward the front. Now I had some problems with this at first, and then I, what I discovered is what you really need to do is you need to put pressure right where that screw is. So you gotta really squeeze that down and then you'll be able to easily slide that lock over. And now the knife is put back together. Nice and simple. It really is simple. I think, you know, when I first saw this, I thought, yeah, that kind of looks kind of cool, but you know, it feels a little gimmicky. I don't know if I'm totally sold on the idea. But it won one of the awards at Blade Show, like probably best new idea or whatever the, I don't know what they all were. I didn't get my award, so I didn't pay a lot of attention after that. But it just, it, it feels good. It feels good in the hand, it feels quality. It's aesthetically, it's a very nice looking knife. I know a lot of people have 
said things like it's kind of got this uh, World War II kind of tank feel to it with that big uh, star there and just the overall shape, the color, you know, the aluminum scales, very subtle uh, texture right there. Ergonomically, it feels good. I like the flipper on it, very easy to operate. I don't have any real complaints about this knife. And, I, and as you know, I don't normally review a lot of folders. I'm not a folder person. I don't get that excited about folders. Usually it's stuff like, you know, cold steel folders. Don't cost a lot of money. I like the steel they use, but I carry them for a while. I put them away. I end up carrying a fixed blade again. And then I get bored and I'll bring them back. This is probably the first folder from another company that uh, I was really excited about. And I like it. I mean, I bought it myself. Wasn't sure. It's just, it's, it's, it's that gray area. It's the $90 area is a bit much for the budget guy. It's not enough for the elitist. So it really comes down to, does the knife ring your bell? It's not something, it's not one of those ones where you have to have it um, because it's doing something amazing for you. I like it that much. I think I'm putting this on the Jessica list. I don't normally put folders on the Jessica list all that often, but so far I'm really, really liking this thing. And it's something different. It's not often that you get to see new ideas come out in the knife world. I mean, that's kind of a cool idea they came up with. Some people do get that crazy about their knives that they're always, you know, taking them apart and they got all these little bench made wrenches and this, that, and the other thing. So I definitely think there's a market for this. I just can't say for sure if that's you. Only thing I'm doing here in this video is showing it to you, telling you what I think, what I like about it. I didn't get it from CRKT. Uh, I was going to get it from Going Gear. And I was just kind of like on Amazon and like, ah, I'm going to get it right now. I'm just going to hit the buy button. Got a couple other things. If you want to see one of those other things I got at the end of this video, I'll throw in a little bonus clip, something else. But so far, that it, that's the uh, CRKT home front knife. About 89 bucks on Amazon. I like it. One thing I will do is I will try to report back over time because it has all these moving parts, which essentially takes the knife apart. I'm curious if we need to put something on the threads, if over time it's gonna get so loose that you bump it and the thing freaking falls apart in your pocket. That's something that can only be shown after I've carried it for a couple months and see what my experience is. So I'll get back to you on that. Maybe that'll be something that I put, that's probably something that I'll put up on the second channel, which should be live next week. And I will let everybody know about that. All right, so that's all I got for right now. I'll put a couple buy links to this in the description box below because it is on Amazon. I will add it to the PM101 store, which that helps me keep doing what I'm doing. So links to the CRKT product page will also be in the description box below. I'm Chris from Prepare My 101. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click, I know I say this a lot, but clicking like, sharing the video, and if you're not already subscribed, subscribing helps me tremendously. So please do that if you like the video. Other than that, stick around. I'll throw a bonus in here at the end if you want to see that too. All right, guys, see you next time. All right, completely unrelated to the CRKT knife. Uh, this is something that just arrived probably 20 minutes ago. I uh, heard the mail truck, ran out there, opened it up. And this is something I purchased in response to my vehicle emergency kit and the stuff that I talked about in the uh, Treklite bug net video. 
I set that vehicle up to be able to just, I could be driving down the road and be like, hey, I'm just gonna go this way and go camp. Nothing else in my car, but what's stored in the back. And it was cold, it was colder than we expected that last camping trip. And I was in shorts and t-shirt and I didn't pack anything. So I ended up having to put on a rain suit and use my grabber all weather blanket to stay warm. So I got this, I was looking around on Amazon and I just stumbled upon this. This is a Snug Pack pro product called the Snug Pack Jungle Blanket. Blanket size 76 inches by 64 inches. Weight 700 grams or 25 ounces. Comes with a nice little stuff sack which you can cinch this down even more. What the, uh, what, the, what the product information page says, and it's backed up by a lot of user reviews, is this is going to keep you comfortable down to about 40 degrees. You know, pushing it maybe 37, 36. So for something this small, that's pretty impressive to me. And I figure if I combine this with having the grabber all-weather blanket as the inner layer against my body reflecting my body heat back with this, this is going to have to be something for a cold weather overnight test. You know, I, I try. I, I promised that uh, that cold weather challenge last last winter, and then it never got cold. So I'm kind of hoping that we have an actual real winter this year. So let's open this up take a look at this blanket for the first time so I look oh huh, that's interesting it says this is uh, anti bacterial fabrics so if you're kind of like a smelly dirty person and you're just full of germs ooh, this is nice it's, it's kind of got this uh, shiny diamond pattern you can you can feel the the soft ins insulation to it. Can we see here? It's a pretty good sized blanket. Granted, it's like 89 degrees right now, so I'm not going to be doing this for very long. This looks and feels, to my first impression, to be a really nice product. Here's the thing, it was only like 25 bucks on Amazon. That's what made me pull the trigger on it. I was like, this thing says it'll keep me warm down to 40 degrees. It's a small, you know, compressible blanket, insulation. Okay. It says right here, insulated with travel soft. Comfort rated down to 45 degrees. Extreme 36. Kind of like with sleeping bags. When it comes down to, it's like, okay, it can get down to like 36, like just above freezing, you're not gonna die. But 45 degrees, you'll stay pretty warm. 45 degrees is pretty chilly if you don't have a sleeping bag. If you ever, if you ever go camping a lot. So this looks like a nice little compact prep item that I get to add to my car kit now and as soon as I go camping again where it gets cold enough at night I will test this thing out I'll repeat the process that I had from the last camping trip uh, that will be my sleep system so I'll keep with the the shorts in the t-shirt whatever I wear out there and just add that to the car kit and we'll see how comfortable it is. Seems pretty nice. And then we'll, and then we'll bust it out uh, when we get to winter, late fall, too. All right, just wanted to show that to you, give a quick first impression. Almost, almost an unboxing. That's all I did was take it out of the box, but I hadn't taken it out of the bag yet. So pretty cool product. I'll put a link to that uh, in the description box as well. All right, guys, see you next time.